Whoa, whoa, where are you going? Hey, I'll Alicia. No, 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 no. Hey, you can't go back there. I have hey, to go. You Nick. promised, Mom. Alicia. Come you on. make promises all the time, Nick. I'm Lie down. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. Okay, but listen, Alicia, if you leave, you won't come back. Please. You let Mom go. I'm not safe. No, Matt. Matt is not safe. Okay. No, no, Alicia, you don't get what it makes people do. You don't know what I have to do, Alicia. Wait, you, you don't know. You. Matt will hurt you. No, 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 not now. Not now. Don't do this to me, Nick. Not now. Don't you do this, you stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> Have a seat. Oh, Thanks, like everybody. Her. That was such a nice round of clapping. Thanks. <laughs> uh, congratulations on Fear the Walking Dead, one of the most highly anticipated shows I think of the of all of television forever. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it did, did all right. So. <laughs> Which is good were you me. were you nervous going into it? Were you nervous about sort of making sure that the fans, uh, the rabid fans of the original series and the comic books were, were going to be pleased? Were you, was that on your mind at all? Um, when we first started, it wasn't on my mind. Uh, I kind of just was like, oh, it's a job. Thank God someone wants to employ me. And um, <laughs> Were you a fan of the original series? Um, I... I didn't, I, when I got the gig, I, I started watching it and then I became completely obsessed with it. And I did like all five seasons in like three weeks or so. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a lot of binge TV. Did you have nightmares? Did you have zombie nightmares or anything? When we started filming, we started, I started having a few kind of weird dreams. Not nightmares, but like strange dreams. What, what do you think is scarier, zombies or vampires? I go with zombies, but there are two of them are the sort of on my scare list. But like um, a zombie, you can kind of maybe run from quicker yes. than you can a vampire. Vampires, I think they can just appear as bats yeah. places. And or I something. don't like flying things. Like bats flying around, don't like that. Well, let's be real. Bats are scarier <laughs> than vampires. Yes. <laughs> the animal but then, incarnation but then, like, of a vampire. But then the bat then becomes the vampire, doesn't it? So it's like one and the same. <laughs> it is the same. But when the bat turns into the vampire, I'm kind of like, get out of here, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, it's not scary now. No. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I get maybe actually a zombie because you you know then it's like a human really, like you could be your neighbor and you're like, whoa, that's not cool. So you 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 get this gig, you get you get this gig on on Fear the Walking Dead. What kind of conversations are you having with the creators? I mean, I know that they changed the name of the character, right? For for you, is that true? No, I when I was first testing for this the show, um, the scripts that you get so they don't get leaked to the public have um like. Dumb, like dummy names, so like fake names. Uh, it was Ashley. My name was Ashley when I was first reading for it. And I was like, oh, Ashley, like that makes so much sense. It's cool. And then when I was reading the actual script after I'd gotten the job, it was Alicia. And I was like, that's, what a coincidence. Were you kind of like, guys, I, I'm not this no, person. I, Don't write me to be this person. I didn't even think about it. I just kind of was like, oh, cool. Like that suits her. And I, it was spelt slightly differently. So it didn't, I didn't even think about it. And now I'm doing this like promo runs, like press stuff and everyone keeps asking me about the question and I'm like this could get a little awkward uh so I'm I mean it feels different for me but yeah so you have uh in this show you have a uh drug addicted uh brother who uh we've just seen you saving from seizing on the floor and you have a sick boyfriend who we don't necessarily know what his sickness is right yeah i mean well for her she just thinks he's probably got a bad flu and she i mean it's confusing like why is everyone telling her to really like get out of the room but he's most um, likely going to be he's most likely turning right i mean you'll have to wait and find out <laughs> i thought you? you were leading me down that road you were like well she doesn't know but they all we all know no but well i mean knows. obviously they think something's up um you know, and they've seen the most, so you're probably, you know, worth seeing their advice instead of mine. Uh, but yeah, the the dangerous thing with like this show is that it it is it isn't clear at the start. You know, people are just getting sick, and it's not clear cut symptoms of oh, well, that's a walker. It's you know your neighbor or like your boyfriend. Yeah. You don't become a walker until it's too late. Yes. And let's hope that doesn't happen to me too soon, because then I would be dead on the show. <laughs> uh, you, you, you've been acting since you were eight years old, right? You started in Australia? Yeah. When did, you, when, did, when, did you, when did the move to the States happen? 
Um, I moved to the States when I was 18. So I finished school, high school, and then I just kind of decided to up and leave. Um, and I, like, I was here for about six weeks and I was very, it was just all tunnel vision. I was just like, well, I just have to like go and just be there and that's where I'm going to be. Um, and I didn't know anyone. I had no friends. I had like a, a manager there. That was it. Um, you were in LA? I was in LA. And then uh, luckily I managed to book a gig and so it sustained me to then move move back to LA and, and actually try and give it a good shot. What was that gig? Uh, it was a film, a horror film called um, uh, Where the Devil Hides, which I don't know where it is. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Whatever, you got paid, right? <laughs> I got paid. I mean, hey, it was amazing for me. It was like I was this 18-year-old that was just like, wow, I've got like a gig in the States and, and like it's a lead role in this, like, and it, it was like a good kind of moderately priced indie film. It's just the, a lot of the time the, that stuff never eventuates into anything. Um, but It's got a great title, Where the Devil Hides. Where the Devil Hides. It went through about s seven titles. I remember, like, because <laughs> they, they market different titles for audiences and, and you know. So you're 18 it. years old. You're the lead in this in this horror movie. Is yeah. it a, like a slasher movie? What is it? Yeah, it's kind of like, mm, like a paranormal, like, thriller type thing. Mm -hmm. Elements. Were you were you at that time seeing that maybe you would have a career uh, acting in a, in a number of kind of paranormal or zombie or no horror absolutely movies? no clue I was just like, like that's it in this fact, is over <laughs> that was so not what I ever wanted to really do it, and so it's it's hilarious how it seems to be the theme now that I've carried through so far like doing post apocalyptic style genres not to mention especially horror like, well, I would say the good thing for you about Fear the Walking Dead is that it's not so specific to the genre. Yeah. I mean, it is walkers, it is zombies, but it is also a family drama, and there's a lot of Absolutely. human I, drama there. Exactly, and I think that's why this one is, I, I was so attracted to the script too, is because it is like a family drama to start with, and you do become very invested in the characters straight away. Um, and I, like, it because I, I it does give me anxiety watching horror films like I get really uneasy about it really yes yeah, so well, much so <laughs> let me let me ask you let me ask this question I had this conversation with someone a couple of weeks ago what was the first horror movie that you remember giving you or movie giving you a kind of horrific anxiety oh I remember I <laughs> I was t 11 and I was like going to a sleepover with like the kind of, you know, the popular girl at school. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm going. And, and we were gonna watch a scary movie. And in my head, I was like, yeah, we're gonna watch Jaws. And instead we watched Chainsaw Massacre. And the like, first one? The, yeah, like the, the first one. The, ori I was the like, original from the 70s? No, no, oh, okay. the new one. So it's like all kind of gore that you could pass, like fingernails, like ripping from people. Like, oh God. And I remember I was, I was kind of fine about it. And then my mom picked me up and she was just like, what? they let you watch that? And like, it suddenly came crashing down on me that I was like this, I was ruined and I'd never sleep again. And I became traumatized for like a year. And I remember not being able to like watch any horror films since then. And I was like the, like the lame kid in like year seven, like 13 that would go to like a scary movie sleepover and like sit in the other room because I could not do it. Oh, those kids were the worst. I was you, that kid. You were the worst. I was yeah. the worst kid. But like, I couldn't, I could not sleep. It was like, so my, that's like, it I love severely scarred me and now I'm on Fear the Walking Dead. <laughs> Your mother's really the one that traumatized you though. It sounds like the movie was fine. The movie kind of didn't she affect was like, me. No, you're scared. Yeah, Get scared. Until I was and like, you like lost it. And I think it was because, yeah, she was like, that's, you know, the worst that was banned in the United States at one point. And I think she was referring to the 70s version. She's referring to the 70s yeah. version, yes. Anyway, so that's my story. <laughs> So at 18 years old, you leave Australia. You have tunnel vision. You're, I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to be, I'm going to be an actress. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Was there anyone trying to stop you, or was there just full faith in 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 your ability to do that? Um, it never, it what, it didn't come out of the blue. My parents had sort of expected it for a little bit. I, it, it wasn't like I woke up one day and was like, oh, I'm going to be an actor. And they were like, whoa, let's have a think about this. You know, I've been doing it since I was Too late, bought the bus to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fulfill my dreams. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, no, they, they were supportive, but I just, I look back on it now and I don't really know how I did it because I did find myself in awkward situations. Like I didn't, I didn't have a car, I didn't drive. I didn't know anyone. Like, I was sort of making friends along the way and, like, a Wait, lot who? of those... the people on the bus? What were you yeah, doing? Yeah, I was, like, I was, I 
took the bus for a year the first time I was out in LA. So it was a very and like staying with weird like different people and different on couches of friends of friends, you know, it, it was a very unique experience. But now when in the time, like it was the only choice I had. You know, it was just that or nothing. I, I that was it. So I just did it. But yeah, looking back on it, I kind of there was some, there was some moments. <laughs> Did you find that uh, you were, I mean, you had been acting since you were eight, right? So you'd had the audition process a little bit in Australia. Did you find the LA process was even, was different? Was it more grueling? Um, people warned me about it for a long time and I got there and it just, for me, it didn't really change. I think if you go in with the same principles, then it shouldn't change that much. Um, I think it's just there's a difference in, in hype and hustle in the United States. There's like a, a kind of a grind that really happens. And if they're interested in you, you see it straight away and you start seeing the results immediately. Like the next day you'll get a call. Whereas in Australia it's like weeks past. And you're like, hey, did you ever like watch that tape? And they're like, oh, yeah, well, the director kind of pulled out and it's not happening anymore. And so it's just it's a different type of... I feel like that happens here too. It does, but <laughs> there's so many more opportunities. There's so much more to fill in the gaps anyway. Yeah, so... Not yeah. really. So, th but again, um, I was just tunnel vision. Like, I it didn't even matter. It was just to me. It was just like, all right, on to the next one. And what was the show that you were on just before Fear the Walking Dead? The one hundred was it called the one hundred? The, the hundred, yeah. The hundred, excuse me. Is no, I keep saying the one hundred too, and then I got like a little. It's the it's the wait. It's the hundred. <laughs> no, I see. I still can't get it right. <laughs> um, has that did that show end? And now it's just Fear the Walking Dead. Or are you doing both of those? No, shows I'm right doing now? both, and I'm going back to the hundred. Uh, I'm yeah. Is that, is that difficult? Is that a grueling schedule? It is a grueling schedule. In fact, it's quite different. Fear the Walking Dead was very structured and, and it's, well, I mean, it's also based more in the real world. There weren't as many kind of stunts or, you know, you're still in like regular clothes, whereas the 100, it's like, here's your warrior get up and here's your weapons and this is a horse that you're going to be riding. And, and so it's a little bit more Does this, <laughs> does this get you into the sort of fantasy horror world a little bit more or is this... It's kind of a, a job for you. You go and you love playing the part, but then you go home and you have your own interests that aren't necessarily fantasy or horror. I actually love fantasy. Like, I love Game of Thrones, and I kind of oh, love... Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, like, I'm a big fan of, of the fantasy genre. Um, but, yeah, well, I think this is... It is, like, when I go to work... Um, it's, it's funny, like, if you're on location, it does permeate your, your lifestyle more than when you're at home um, because you're kind of in the same city with the cast and crew and you hang out more and, and you, you're invested in it more because it becomes your, your location. Um, but it also it became something I didn't expect it to. Um, on set, it's so much more lively and, and fun. Like, everyone's having a good time because I guess the the context and the actual um, the treatment of the scripts are so gross and gory and intense. So it's actually kind of a nice balance. So it's not too jarring. Uh, but no, I definitely... Horror is not my primary... Not like, your primary genre? Genre, no. Where, <laughs> where but I do with? love it. Now I'm on this show. I mean, I love this. Have you had the chance to kill a walker yet? Well, I can't tell you that. Well, I mean, as an actress, I mean, as an, <laughs> as an actress, have you gotten the chance to get get a little physical? Yes. Is that is that fun? Yeah, I love doing stunts. I bruise really easily though, so it looks like I've always been in. They're pulling in makeup like, artists over all yes. the time. You're like, gotta take care of these. <laughs> yeah, please. like I, I there was one thing where I um, I was doing a stunt and I just got bruised all over my legs, and I had the producer come up and be like. Uh, is everything okay? Like, are you, and I was like, no, it just looks really bad, but it's, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, what What is it like for you with with fans of the Fear of the Walking Dead? Are you were uh, were you at Com were you at Comic Con? Yeah, with it? I did. Comic what was that like for you? Uh, well, it was. I mean, it's an amazing event and like really surreal. Um, I it was kind of easier for us because no one knew the show and no one knew who we were, and and so we did um, we did the whole H panel and we were between. Um, Walking Dead and Game of Thrones and it was like in the middle everyone just had to sit and watch us <laughs> and like forced to stay <laughs> um, and, and everyone was so lovely and patient and, and generous with us 
But it, it was nice because I, it, we kind of took a back seat and we could just be observant and see how they were responding to what they saw and, and the material. And, and so it's a nice position to be in. I, I've been warned by the Walking Dead cast and many people um, that next year if we go, it might be a little bit different. But In what way? What, what were their warnings? Well, they were like, you probably won't be able to walk around. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, oh, right. it depends how if people of, like this or not. You could kind of mingle a little bit and sort of, or at least kind of hide. Yeah, like, well, we, we were able to, normally they shuttle you between each event or each kind of part of your schedule in a car. But we luckily a few times got to walk around just the city, which was awesome. And like see everyone actually dressed up and like see what the event things on the street were. And that was great. Uh, Does it just blow your mind? It's I, insane. I've never been to Comic Con, but I see pictures, and I'm just kind of like, I don't know if my brain could handle it's that much. Like so confusing too. Like there was, what, I remember we were like on a rooftop somewhere. I was looking down. It was like the stormtroopers were having some kind of protest march against Darth Vader, and I didn't understand like kind of why it was going on. But they had like I don't signs understand and why everything. It would be going on <laughs> and I was like, wait, what are you protesting? <laughs> I always imagine Comic Con to be a place where someone introduced themselves to you in a very casual manner, but is dressed utterly ridiculous. You know, like how you yeah. doing? How you doing? I'm Gary. And you're like Gary. You're, <laughs> like, Gary, you're dressed like as a big gigantic lizard. You look like lizard. the Hulk right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> am, am I supposed to take your question seriously? I'm not sure what yeah, to do with yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of questions, I think we have some questions from the audience. Who has questions? One minute. One minute. We'll get the microphone to you in just Hi. a second. Hi. So, since the show is so large and they're very secretive when they're filming, for your character, do they, do they tell you in advance what's going to happen to your character, or do you kind of just find out script to script when they hand uh, Specifically, it's much more script to script. Um, I try and weasel out information from our writers because I'm too curious and I really want to know. They give us a general arc, um, so you do know where you're at least headed. Um, because it does start to inform the pattern of whether your demise is, you know, positive or negative. Um, and so that starts to seep into your subconscious a little bit. Um, but in terms of the specifics, no, they keep it pretty, pretty script to script. Were you surprised at how uh, sort of tight-lipped everybody has to be on set? Because yeah. everyone kind of talks about that, but what's the actual feeling when you're around that? Well, we can't. We have to wear, like, capes over our costumes and stuff. When we were first filming, they wouldn't, like, let us, like, walk around. And I thought that was so reserved to, the, like, Marvel comic books, you, those movies, where it's, like, Captain America. Of course, you want him, in, you know, to be shielded. Wearing, like, jeans and a shirt. And but a I was, like, wearing jeans and a shirt, and I was, like, really? But they totally wanted everyone covered up and... Um, yeah, and I think especially in Vancouver too, because they that's where we were filming a lot of this, they know that they know exactly all the locations. <laughs> so they would just like seek out. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a little bit of censorship. I kept forgetting my my cape though, and I got in trouble for that a few times. What kind of trouble do you get into? <laughs> they just like, you know, they you feel bad because you got someone then running around being like, Can you just this was in the car. And you're just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just forgot. I'm wearing jeans. Some young, some, some young PA. That's just like, please, I don't want yes, to get in trouble again. A young PA. <laughs> oh. uh, I think we have a question right here. Who's here for our Kim Dickens interview, Hi. right? Uh, I'm a huge fan. Um, I know that you have a, a history with music and background oh, yeah. with music. Uh, are you planning to continue in that path? And are you going to sing on the show at all? Um, sing on the show? No. <laughs> my, my musical background is largely, I studied per, um, classical percussion for about 10 years. Um, and then like, and jazz drum kit. So I, that was my kind of world that I, I did. And, and Ruben um, Blades, who's on, on the show, he's obviously huge in the music industry. He's a, a Latin musician. Um, and when he, he was definitely wanting to sort of get something together, but I was like, Ruben, I'm not that good anymore. I've had like three years where I haven't done anything. And, but, but no, I mean, I, I definitely want to keep that part of my, my you know, life alive. But it's, I, it's more for myself than, than, you know, for everyone else, I think. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, another question in the audience right here. Hi. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the differences between The Walking Dead and uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, from my perspective, because I, I do love The Walking Dead, uh, but what I really love about Fear the Walking Dead is that the, specifically the location, because I... I the Walking Dead, it has that rural country kind of vibe. It's all in the woods. Um, it's a little more provincial, those like 
plantation style home in the in the second season um, but with this it's so urban and I love that it's given us leeway to explore that like the urban decay and and the graffiti and that charm that gritty charm of LA too where it's the sunsets and the palm trees but also homeless kind ofness and everything pollution pollution <laughs> um, and and so it's also what's great too is The Walking Dead. It's based on comic books, so you don't have as much creative reign. You know, this we had so much more to do with than um, cinematically. Our the director for one, two, and three, Adam Davidson. He could just what he did create was a real um, atmosphere. I felt that was so different to the original. We I felt you really get that charm and that that oozing culture of LA that's not Hollywood. It's, it's East LA and it's very real. And, and I love that we can make it a little bit more art house. Does that, like, it, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, this is a lot more artistic than um, It's a lot more book. dramatic. It's a yeah. lot more dramatic rather than sort of action oriented. Yes, that's the thing. And in, I mean, the, dr the drama is a certain amount of action, but it's not as sort of uh, heavy on the, on the, on, on the gore. Yeah, will. and I think, like, The Walking Dead, it had such specific um, pinpoints in it, like the way that, you know, Rick Grimes is a sheriff and he's got an action hero uh, persona already crafted. And you've got... I remember at Comic-Con someone asked about, asked about um, specific costume detailing that become so connected to the character, like Michonne's uh, machetes or, or Daryl's um, uh, hat or something like that. It was very specific, whereas we're trying to still kind of craft those and find them naturally, which I kind of love. Yeah. Absolutely. Next question. Hi. Hi. So uh, you have acted in quite a few sci-fi series and projects. Do you have a particular affinity for sci-fi? And have you... Uh, yeah, do you have that? <laughs> yeah, no, I love sci-fi. I do love sci-fi and fantasy. They're kind of my things, I think. Um, I, I didn't expect to be doing so much sci-fi, but it turns out I did. I didn't even expect for the 100 to be so sci-fi, kind of. I mean, post-apocalyptic, definitely. That's, but I also think that whole, whole apocalyptic vibe is so relevant now. Like everything, a lot of films you see now, like Mad Max, um, Tomorrowland, like there's so many films out at the moment that are just relevant to an apocalyptic genre. We're all pretty scared. Yeah, and it's in, well, it's in the zeitgeist. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot going on. Exactly, there's so much. And it's, it's often, you know, human created in many ways and it's like interesting like I if you think about the 50s you know the technology was a, a source of inspiration and excitement the Jetsons were like you know propelling for human thought and and engineering and and now it's like oh how many maids can we kill ourselves and <laughs> which is a little a little dark but it is I mean it's everywhere <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> was that it really, was so really... tempting to just wrap it right there. <laughs> and just be like, that's it. <laughs> and <laughs> we're take... going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take one more question. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. So because this is sort of a prequel series and we know where this horrible apocalypse goes, how do you see your character adapting to that? And which character do you think from The Walking Dead she'd most relate to? Um, I think uh, Maggie is my relatable character if I had to pick one. Um, I think they get along really well actually. Um, she's probably see her as like a big sister vibe, uh, which she would like. Um, in terms of, uh, what was the other part of that question? Just sort of how, how your character would react oh, to yeah. seeing the minor apocalypse. That's right. The main, the big one. Yeah, 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 how she would adapt, yeah. Um, well, I think it's interesting. She, I feel like she could go, without spoiling anything, I think there are two different paths potentially. There's like that idea that, you know, she, has the most to lose out of everyone because she has those ambitions. You know, she wants to get out of LA and it's about um, starting afresh. She's in a, a really difficult family situation. So for her, it's that, that hope to then hopelessness, that's a huge drop to make for any human being. And I think with that, you either, whether she rises to the occasion and uses that resilience to then actually make her a very stoic and resilient person or whether that destroys her I'm not sure because I as a you know they do go script to script and I mean I have a I kind of 
have a hint of where it's going. But um, where's it going? I can't tell you. Uh, <laughs> oh man. But I mean, yeah, it is interesting. Like, does that, like, or even if that stoicness, if that turns bad instead of good, because it's not like I think um, Travis on in play like Cliff Curtis, he is the good guy. You know, he always wants to see the best in people, and and often that doesn't necessarily work in in this world. And so for her, I don't know if it's like. I mean, do you go with the bad and you run with it, or do you try and, like, be the good guy? I don't know. I don't know either. I think that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's you. Been a pleasure Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the show. Thanks.